Hello everyone, Dr. Rawls here. I've got an interesting new study that I'd like to share with you. Uh, the, now this study is significant because it's looking at herbs specifically for treatment of Borrelia, the microbe associated with Lyme disease. And very importantly, it was out of Johns Hopkins University, the prestigious medical institution. So it looks like alternative therapies are finally getting some attention in the mainstream medical community. Now, there are plenty of studies out there showing that herbs have antimicrobial activity, and there are many herbs that have antimicrobial activity, but this was the first study that was specifically looking at Borrelia, and they looked at a couple of different species of Borrelia, but it, it's very important for that alone. Um, they were looking at some commonly used herbs and actually many of the ones that I recommend, which is, is really awesome. Um, the top on the list was Cryptolepis. Uh, behind that, Japanese knotweed, cat's claw, Chinese skullcap, artemisia, black walnut, uh, cystus and canis, which is actually more of an essential oil, andrographis, stevia, grapefruit seed extract, and monolaurin. Now, these are some commonly used herbs for Lyme disease, and they tested each one. Now, it's important to note that it was a uh, test tube study. It was an in vitro study. Now, they did that on purpose because um, there's, they wanted to document that these herbs were actually killing Borrelia directly and not killing by affecting the immune system, which we, we all know that they do that. So this was studying to see which ones actually killed Borrelia outright. The other thing that's significant about this study is they compared it to antibiotics. They compared it to doxycycline and cefuroxime, which are two antibiotics that are commonly used in, um, in Lyme disease treatment. They also uh, were looking at how it treated the active modal forms and the persister forms, the cyst forms that are so hard to get rid of. Um, so this is uh, so what they found was uh, when you look at this spectrum of different different substances, top on the list was cryptolepis, um, and it actually outperformed the antibiotics for treating the mobile forms and the persister forms, which the antibiotics didn't get. Uh, right behind Cryptolepis was Japanese knotweed, cat's claw, Chinese skullcap. Uh, those were top on the list. Also, Artemisia or wormwood and black walnut were excellent. Uh, Cystus and Canis, not surprisingly, has a very uh, potent uh, essential oil called Carbacrol uh, that's also somewhat toxic, so you have to be more careful with it. Um, but it was toxic against Borrelia too. The things that didn't work and didn't show any significant activity against Borrelia, one that I was surprised at is Andrographis because that's a favorite herb. Stevia, you know, we've heard a lot about Stevia and it had no activity. The grapeseed extract they used did also did not have any activity and Monolaurin didn't either. So that really adds a lot of great information as far as looking at how we go about treating Lyme disease. And, and so I, I think there are some things that are really important to point out here. Um, it's really great to have information that we've got this set of herbs that do have uh, even better activity than antibiotics. But it's also important to recognize that there are other ways that these substances can work. And that's why I would not take uh, andrographis out of a formula for treating Lyme disease because we know that one of the big advantages over antibiotics with the herbs is they can have a, a broader effect on the immune system. They can reduce inflammation and enhance the ability of the immune system to eradicate. So we know that the andrographis is a really wonderful immune boosting herb. Um, now, in addition, we also know that it's not just Borrelia. You know, when we're talking about chronic Lyme disease, what we're talking about is a situation where the microbes and other things come together to disrupt immune system functions. So the immune system is weakened, and that allows not only Borrelia to flourish in tissues, but all the things that we call co-infections in addition 
to that, other microbes that we all harbor in our tissues, like Epstein-Barr virus and herpes viruses and all these other things, they start coming out too. So I liken it to a boiling pot um, that once the immune system falters, it's not just Borrelia, it's everything driving this train and making it worse. Um, so that's where andrographis, I think, has real value is it has some nice antiviral properties and also it's uh, affecting a lot of other things that maybe some of these other herbs aren't getting quite as well. Um, so other things to talk about in, in this study, as far as the other herbs, uh, reading the study, the grapefruit seed extract, this is one that's been around for a long time and has documented antimicrobial activity. They didn't find any against Borrelia. And the reason they offered was that they used organic grapeseed extract. Most of the extract, grapeseed ex, grapefruit seed extracts out there are actually uh, non-organic. And they found that the antimicrobial in these substances, in, in these supplements, is actually a really potent toxin that they use on the grapefruits and it's absorbed into the seeds, and that was what was providing the antimicrobial act activity. So grapeseeds, because it because the actual substance doing the antimicrobial is a toxin to us, that's probably not a good choice. They also talked about stevia. They couldn't get stevia to do anything where there are other studies out there that have. And what they were speculating was that the other studies were using uh, products with high alcohol concentrations, and that could have actually been the antimicrobial activity, but not the stevia. Now, you've heard me talk about stevia a lot. Um, stevia has never been used to treat infections. It, it has other properties that are beneficial when you use the whole extract, and it probably does have some mild antimicrobial properties. Most herbs do when you're using the whole stevia extract. But this one didn't suggest that it's a very effective treatment for Lyme disease. Um, in addition, I don't routinely recommend uh, Artemisia and black walnut long-term because they do have some potential toxicities. Uh, Short-term of weeks to a couple of months, I think they're okay. So they're more, I see as additive therapy. They're good for uh, intestinal parasites and that sort of thing. So. We've got so many other good herbs that I think have lower toxicity that I tend to put those on the reserve list for special use. Um, but they are very valuable herbs. It's really great to know about them. So in summary, why herbs are so important in treating Lyme disease? Not just this study, but looking at all the information we know about herbs. This study showed that they are effective, for especially these top herbs, the cryptolepis, Japanese knotweed, cat's claw, Chinese skullcap. They're effective against both the motile and the cyst forms of the Borrelia, especially the cryptolepis and the Japanese knotweed. Um, and when you look at herbs in general, they offer a wide range of coverage against many types of bacteria, viruses, protozoa, and fungi. So they've got a lot broader range of coverage in antibiotics. All of your herbs, now this study wasn't looking, it was specifically not looking at how the herbs do affect immune system functions, but we know they do, that's well documented. So you, in addition to suppressing the microbe, you've got that modulation or enhancement of immune system functions, which is exactly what we want to do. And the really cool thing about herbs over antibiotics, and I think this is just a property of uh, you know, the, these phytochemistry of the plants and the plants use, are using these things to take care of themselves, but they don't disrupt normal flora and they actually help balance the microbiome of the gut and the rest of the body. That's a really important aspect of herbs over antibiotics that allows us to use them long term. So the herbs, especially the, those top herbs that I mentioned, have a very low potential for toxicity. That means you can use them for a long time, keep these microbes suppressed, work the immune system back to where it needs to be to keep things in check so that you can actually work to get over the illness. 
Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's not a short term proposition. It took me years of taking herbs to get my life back completely. And I've continued uh, just immune supporting herbs long term. I think it's really, really important. So that's about all I've got for you right now. Uh, take care and be well. And don't forget to take your herbs.